Hi, welcome back. Um, I hope you're doing well. Uh, this is going to be your second lesson in our whole bassoon adventure. So last week we learned two scales, which were the B flat major and then the B flat natural minor, which was my mistake. We weren't working in the right key for the minor. It really should have been G minor, but you learned a harder scale anyway, so that's props to you, right? Cool. So this week we're going to learn two more scales. It's going to be F major and D minor, right? So you're wondering, well, why two scales? Why do they have different names? Well, F major and D minor both have the same key signature, right? So if you know your concert F, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Fa is B flat, right? So that has one flat in the whole scale. D minor is the same way. It may be starting on a different note, but it also has one flat, right? If we go back to last week, B flat major has two flats. And then G minor, which we should have done, also has two flats. So once you know B flat, you can learn G minor, right? So how do you find the relative minor or how do you find the second scale that we keep talking about? So I have my piano pulled up here. So I'm gonna move you over a little bit. So starting on concert C, right? You go up to, so there's F, right? So, do. so that's the whole F scale, right? So you start at F. To find the relative minor, you go down three notes starting on F here. So, Do, T, La. So it's three white keys down on a piano. So, Do, T, La. So that's how you would find the relative minor. And same thing. Same thing, one flat in the whole scale. So that's why we pair these up because the similar key signature and the same notes help us to learn the scale, right? Cool. So B flat, we started on B flat and our fifth note was F. So for this scale, we're gonna start on F, but it's not the F that we learned last time, you know, where it has no, no fingers laying down. That's gonna be our top. Our bottom F, the way we're gonna start this, if I can find my reed first, because as we all know, your reed should be soaked like that. So our low F, same thing, you have your whisper key in the back. One, two, three, and then one, two, three, and this pad of keys right here, as we played um, for, I don't know, we didn't play any of those last week, but there's this pad of keys right here. So one, two, three, and you wanna hit this little square guy right here. So not the big one, and you don't want this small one either. You want this guy right here. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and pressing that guy down, right? So, so low F. As we learned last week, you have F, and then the, the next three notes are just like the top of the B flat scale, except with your whisper key on, right? F, F to G, one, two, three, one, two, three, whisper key, A, B flat, right? So look at that, you're already back at the bottom of the B flat scale. Cool, right? So just to get us um, kind of uh, used to this new setup. Let's just go uh, four slow quarter notes, F up to B flat. Four, uh, let's do two breaths uh, to breathe, two beats to breathe, and we'll go B flat back down to F. All right, here we go. So one, two, three, four. <laughs> couple notes. So we did F, G, A, B flat, right? Next two notes, C and D are just like the B flat major scale. So if you remember for C, 
it's just one, two, and three. And D is also just one and two, all right? So the way I'm going to break this scale up, because it's so familiar, I'm gonna break it up into two different chunks. So we started on chunk one, right? F, G, A, and B flat. Cool, you know that first chunk. Second chunk is C, D, E natural, and F. Notice how that differs slightly from the B flat major scale. So it's not completely the same, but there are many similarities. So C, as we were talking about, D, and then for E natural, you literally just lift up your second finger and that's E natural. And remember that whisper key is still on in the back. C, D, E natural, and then just like last week, F is no, nothing on any of the tone holes of the keys, except your back thumb on the whisper key. All right, so let's take that. Let's just do chunk two. So C, D, E natural, and F. Two beats at the top to breathe and come right back down. Here we go. So one, two, three, four. <laughs> So now, let's put both chunks together. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna do chunk one, take a breath, chunk two, take a breath, and then do the same coming back down, all right? Here we go. So F to B flat is chunk one, and then C to F is the second chunk, and then vice versa coming back down. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> two chunks, you just learn the whole F major scale, which is kind of cool. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and not breathe in between both those chunks. So really just go from F up to F, keeping the chunks in mind because that's how I like to break it up the best. That's how I learned it the best. It could work for you. It could not work for you. So if you want to pause the video at any point and just really work on either the first chunk or the second chunk, or work on what we just did, perfectly fine. But in the meantime, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from the bottom up to the top, take four beats at the top to breathe, and then top back to bottom, all right? So this is F major, just one octave. Here we go. So one, two, three, four. <laughs> spent 10 minutes, right? That's all it took. And we broke it down into separate chunks. And look at that, you just learned a whole scale in 10 minutes. That's, that's honestly awesome. You know, it took me forever to really start learning my scales. And so the fact that we can do it in 10 minutes together, just one scale is awesome, right? And just as we were talking about last week, you know, you can do different rhythms with these scales. So let's do that actually. So the rhythm we're gonna do is I'm just gonna pound out here. It's ba 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 ba. ba all right. So it's one two and three four. One two and three four. All right. So we're gonna do that up. To take four beats at the top to breathe. Same rhythm coming back down. Right. Here we go. So very slowly. Ba 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 ba. ba. All right. Here we go. One, two, three, and four, and. 
As you go along, you can input different rhythms. The way that I like to do it is I like to work with a metronome. You know, there's so many apps out there. There's computer software. There's, you know, some people choose to buy the little tuner metronome combo. Like I know I had that when I was, you know, in high school and playing and learning this bassoon. I had something like that. So really using the metronome and kind of increasing the tempo to where you can still play it, but you're being challenged, you know? So let's say, you know, you start at, let's say you start at um, 80 BPM, solid tempo, right? And let's say, mm, today I'm feeling, you know, I wanna increase it to 83, right? And you know, if you can only go that high at that point, that's perfectly fine. You know, as long as you're really trying to get continuity of the scale going up and back down, Really just making sure that your breath is really supported and just sending that air right through the vocal. All right? So that's kind of a little practicing spiel on how to do these scales for right now. But now we're going to go into the minor. So we're going to go into D minor. So remember, F, G, A, B flat, C, D. So this is your starting note. You're not going all the way back down to F. So you're starting right on D. So, and you already know the first three notes, D, E natural, F. Those are the first three notes of the scale, which is awesome. So, you have these notes, you have, right? Cool. And so, going up again, it's just like we learned last week with um, B flat major, we're gonna go to G. So if you remember, with G, one, two, three, back whisper key, one, two, three, and remember that little half hole right there, right? So remember that rolling motion that we talked about last week. So you have this rolling motion like that. Not so wide that you're co completely off the key, but not so little that you're still covering most of it. You want it about halfway, right? So for the sake of just practicing, let's just practice rolling F to G, F to G, F to G, F to G. All right, so let's do, let's do eight times back and forth. So it's gonna be 16 quarter notes. So F, G, F, G, all right, here we go. So just very slow, eight times back and forth, really focusing on that half hole, all right? So one, two, three, four. So notice how there was a little bit of squeaks and a little bit of growling. That's going to happen as you're learning how to half hole. Basically what that means is that as you're doing your half hole, you're not giving your first finger enough time to really, really secure that half hole. So what I, what I have learned basically is I need to give this, this first finger just a little bit of a head start when I'm on the F. So really thinking down more so than just right on the, the tone hole, right? So F, really thinking that roll down before I even put the rest of my fingers down. All right, cool. So, so we now have the first chunk of the um, D minor scale. So let's just work on that. D, E, F, G natural. All right, let's just break that chunk up. So here we go. So one, two, three, and four. <laughs> So, 
we just learned chunk one, but we're going to call it chunk one of the D minor scale. So we're going to do the same thing like we did with F major, where we're going to break it into chunks, and we're going to put all those chunks together, all right? So chunk one, if you remember, is D, E, F, G, right? So put that away for right now, and we're going to move on to the second chunk. So this next transition I find is honestly the hardest transition out of any scale. It's going from G to A like we learned last week, right? So remember, you have one, two, three, one, one, two, and three here, and you still have your whisper key down. So, and to go to A, you have to lift the pinky and the whisper key and this, and this third finger. So this is the change here. Notice a lot of fingers flying to get to one note, all right? So let's just work on that for right now. Let's do um, four times back and forth, going from G to A. So G, A, G, A, so on and so forth, all right? Very slowly, don't worry about tonguing the notes. We're just going to really work on getting that this first finger enough time to roll the half hole back and forth, all right? Here we go. So one, two, three, four. <sighs> So if you want to pause right there, really just solidify that half hole rolling, because that to me, like I said before, that's the hardest part about any scale is learning how much of a head start to give that half hole and how far you have to physically roll it. By all means, go ahead and stop if you need to, work on that. If not, and you're all set to go, we're going to keep on trucking up the scale. So, you have A, one, two, three, one, two. And then B flat, just like on the bottom, one, two, three, one, two, and then the back B flat key, right? But no whisper key. So because we're getting into uh, a range of our instrument where we don't need the whisper key because this is all about airflow and overtones, all right? So one, two, three, one, two, and back B flat, all right? And then going back up, C, it's just like on the bottom, like in the F major scale, except no whisper key. And then D, same thing as on the bottom, but no whisper key. So A, B flat, C, D. Simple, right? Cool. So let's take the second chunk now, and we're just going to run that up and down. So A, B flat, C, D, take two beats at the top to breathe, D, C, B flat, A. All right? Cool. So here we go. So one two, three, four. One, two. One, two. Perfect, cool. So that's the second chunk. So remember, like I said, we're going to do chunk and chunk, and now we're going to put it all together. So, the way we're gonna do this, it's just like we were doing with F. We're gonna go chunk one, take a breath, chunk two, take a breath, same thing, two, and then one, all right? So very slowly, don't worry about tonguing right now. So that's what we're gonna do. Here we go. So starting on D, going up to G, breath, A, up to D, take a breath, same thing back down, very slowly. So one, and two, three, Four. Breathe. Breathe. literally it. So now the next step, as we did in the F scale, we're going to go no stops, full up, take four beats at the top to breathe, and come right back down. All right, so here we go. So one, two, full scale, and go. <laughs>
two, three, back, down. You just learned two whole scales in the matter of minutes. And the way we did that is, like I said before, we just broke it into chunks and we worked on our problem areas and we really just kind of sat and really made sure each chunk was solid before moving on to the next, All right? So just like we were doing in the previous scale, you can apply a rhythm to it to make it easier to learn. So remember in the first scale, the rhythm was Da, 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 da. For this scale, we're actually going to change the rhythm just a tiny bit from the first one. So we're going to go da, 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 da. All right? So we're going to take it very slowly at first because it is kind of weird to do it with rhythms. So we're going to take it very, very, very slowly. All right? So let's just do the D minor scale. We'll do that rhythm. So ba, 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 ba. All right, here we go. So one and two and three and four and. So that's, that's the rhythm right there. And again, if you need to take things slower or if you want to take things faster, that's all up to you because the beauty of scales is if you practice with a metronome, you really don't have to worry so much about, you know, how fast you go or how slow you go. It's all up to personal preference. And I think that's the beauty of finding your own rhythm, finding your own practicing schedule. All right? So... Um, that about covers what we have to do in terms of scales. I just want to do a real quick thing about taking care of the instrument itself because there's a lot of parts going on here and there's a lot of things that could go wrong very, very quickly. All right. So when you're done playing, what do you do? Well, what you do first, you got to take this guy off. You got to take the reed off. And I like to kind of just put him in a box or a reed case if you have a reed case, or if you have um, like a, a small Altoids box, like the little box that the, the mints come in, you can just empty out the mints, poke a bunch of holes in the top, and stick um, some tissues in there, and that can be your reed case. I just like to put the reed away first to ensure that this guy is safe and it's not gonna get damaged because these reeds are not cheap. Next step, vocal, take it off. We're gonna talk about this guy separately. Bell. This top guy with this key. You take him off, you really don't need to clean him. You want to take him off the seat strap. And if you're using um, this black crutch thing or something similar, I like to take that off as well because it's easier. And so you have three different joints here. You got your wing joint here, and you have your tenor joint here, and you got your boot. So what I like to do is I like to lay this down on my lap first, and I like to See how this has a little clamp that secures these together? I like to undo that, twist, and take the tenor joint off first. And now, how do we clean it? So, what I like to use is something that looks kind of like this. It's a silk swab. You can see it's kind of see-through. And it has weighted end here. So it kind of looks like, if you can see that, they're little round metal um, balls that just kind of hang off here and it kind of acts as a weighted end. And so what I like to do is you see that there's two size holes. You got this guy and you got this guy. So what I like to do is turn them upside down, take the weighted end of your silk swab and stick him. It's a little bit of a challenge. You got to stick him through this end, let it roll out the bottom, kind of like that, and just pull this through. So that way you get any moisture that's in here, you get that out. Cool. So now that guy is good to go back in the case. Next step, 
wing joint. Same deal. Lightly twist, take them off. And notice this guy has a little bit of a metal end on mine. Some do, some don't. What I like to do is take the swab first, just kind of clean that off because that gets a lot of gunk in there. Same thing, you got two holes. Personally, I like to go from the, the um, bottom end up through the top because it's less um, of a, uh, a hassle because you might somehow take a key off in the process if you do it the other way. So same thing, take the metal swab, the metal, not the metal part of the swab, stick it through, let it just kind of sink and let it come out the bottom like that. So you see it's right here, I'm kind of tugging on it. And just kind of let that run through like that. Takes all that moisture out. This is all good to go back in the case. Finally, you get the boot joint. Now what's funny about this guy is it has two holes, but they kind of interconnect into the bottom here. All right, so what I like to do is first, I like to take this, shake out the moisture, if there is any. Normally there'd be a little bit that comes out. Now this is the hard joint to clean. So you wanna take that weighted metal end again, and I like to go through the, the bigger of the two holes first. So I like to go through this hole. So you kind of take that through here, set that down, let it run through, and then you gotta do the old magic trick of turning this around, kind of shaking it to really get the metal part to come out of the other hole. As you see here, it's got two different ways it's going in. So that's ideally what you want, not this stuck in that little key. But you want one end coming out each hole, right? So just kind of take that, run that through. And this is, this is going to be the part where if you need help and if you need to really take time and just really sit down and figure out which way to turn it and all that fun stuff to get all the, to get the swab through each side, go ahead and do that. I personally like to clean my boot joint twice because there can be some leftover gunk that you didn't get through the first time. The so same thing, see mine, I even had to finesse a little bit to get out of that second uh, hole here. So same thing, pull it through, same thing. And then you just kind of, Put that guy back in the case where he belongs. And then wrapping up the swab, I take it by the metal end first. I just kind of wrap it around my four fingers here like that. Stick that back in. And then your seat strap, same deal. I take it by the metal end, just kind of roll it back with my four fingers and just put it back in the case like that. And just like that, you have successfully cleaned your instrument and it's not almost, it's, well, it is almost taken care of. I forgot about one thing, which is the vocal. I completely almost forgot. So with this guy, what I like to use is I like to take a pipe cleaner and no, nothing more than that, just a good old, good old pipe cleaner, run some soap and water through this end because this gets full of everything. So I like to take a pipe cleaner, something that's bendy and just kind of take it through here and just kind of clean it out as we go. They do make specialized vocal cleaners. I unfortunately do not have one, but you can easily just take a pipe cleaner and just kind of stick it in and it'll just kind of bend and just get everything out there for you. This will also go back in the case once you are all finished with playing for the day or doing whatever you have to do. All right, so look at that. You just got three mini lessons in about 35 minutes and you know what? I'd say that's pretty successful. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Um, I hope you took something out from it. Keep practicing your scales, and I'll see you next time. Bye.